So that whole rock and roll thing is dead is bullshit. Of I don't know course who it's said bullshit. That. Whoever said that? Who said that? Somebody who wants rock and roll to be dead, you know, some some asshole in a magazine <laughs> or on TV maybe, you know, who who doesn't like rock and roll? You know, hey, rock and roll's dead. They said that in 1957. Yeah, they were wrong then too. No, but I, I never even I never heard it and I never read it, and I never had anyone say that. I it's just it a somewhere. saying, I think. I never heard anybody. Have you heard? It. Do you know who said that? Who said that? President I mean, I Bush, or, I don't know. Six months in every magazine. Rock and roll's dead. Mm -hmm. I've never even seen it in print, that rock and roll is dead. I heard it two years ago in the magazine, yeah. That's yeah? Rock and roll is dead, but it, I mean, it was a, only one time. Was that a magazine for, about Britney Spears? And yeah, probably, yeah, Christina it was. Aguilera or something? One of them pop magazines, you know. What rock the fuck do they know yeah, about rock and roll exactly. anyway? They wouldn't know if it bit them on the ass, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Like they, they think, you know, Jennifer Aguilera is a, a new important Christ, voice. Yeah. You know? I mean, she's a great singer, you know, and she will be better as she goes along because she can really sing, you know, that yeah. chick. I mean, Britney Spears is just like sex bomb, you know, but like Je Jenny Aguilera is a really good fucking singer. And uh, she's already starting to be better, you know, she's starting to do more bluesy stuff, you know. She's really going to be great, you know. But the rest of them are just so much cream puff, you know, just bullshit, you know, it's, uh, it's like it's always been. You know, like in the beginning of rock and roll, you had Little Richard, but you also had Bobby Rydell. You know, I mean, hey, you know, we all know the difference between the two, and this has been the same all the way through. Always in the charts is crap. You know, that was always the message of rock is rebellion. Yeah, shit that pisses your parents off. You know, supposed to turn be that noise down. You know, then you know you got it right. <laughs> but then I think rock and roll, or at least so some bands, they they kind of went sidetracks a little bit. I mean. I don't see that much rock and roll in bands like Slipknot, maybe, you know. That, that's, to me, it's more of a circus type of thing, you know. In 20 years, you will not be singing any of Slipknot songs down the street in your head, you know. And that's the secret. That's why the clever guy of the band is going to leave the band and pull out the mask. Yeah. I mean, what, what's yes, the point? Yes, that's right. Like Kiss, you know. But they had to put them back on because, like, they were ugly, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> Uh-oh, you know, <laughs> put it back on quick. <laughs> did uh, did, did your, your taste in music change through the year you were speaking about blues? Did you ever went to jazz or some other stuff? Of course, man. I'm a musician. You know. I, I'm, I'm not just, I don't just listen to us, you know. <laughs> what the fuck do you hey. think? You know? Well, you heard that Rockabilly album that answers your question. Mm. No, but I mean, jazz music, for example, is something radically different, even if you were musicians. It's radical, all right. There's a lot of people getting away with murder in jazz, I tell you. <laughs> you know, because I have seen sax player get up and do a solo, which is complete bullshit. You know, and like, it's all one note, atonal, and it's all crap. And people stand up and applaud him, you know, because they didn't understand what the fuck he did, yeah. so they thought it was better than them, you know. And it's like rubbish. It's still rubbish, no matter where you look at it. You know, rubbish is rubbish. I'm sorry. You know. Improvisation stuff. Improvisation. Like that. That's the word. Yeah, it means you can get away with murder. Yeah. <laughs> it's like painting a nice painting. All you did was, you know, drop two two cans of paint on a. There's, on, there's a know, difference between, art, say, you know. Rembrandt, right, and that guy that does all that splashes and yeah. rides a bicycle across the canvas, right? <laughs> Rembrandt is a craftsman. This guy is an opportunist. Yeah. You understand the difference? But there's been some great opportunities, like Andy Warhol. Not many. Andy Warhol was crap, man. Are you kidding me? Different coloured pictures of Elvis's face. Sixteen of them. Hey, oh, fucking funny. brilliant. Funny? <laughs> it wasn't funny. Funny makes you laugh. <laughs> the Groucho Marx is funny. Fucking Monty Python's funny. Yeah. Andy Warhol is not funny. Andy Warhol is very depressing, actually. You uh -huh. see that motherfucker in that white fucking wig and that terrible face and them cheap sunglasses <laughs> poncing around in New York like he's an artist. Are you fucking kidding me? He was a lemon. You know, he just <laughs> happened to be a famous lemon, that's all. Yeah. With legs on. <laughs> yeah, a lemon is a lemon. It don't matter. Famous lemon or unknown lemon is still a fucking lemon. Uh. You know? <laughs> You uh, thought he was good, and he fooled you too. Yeah, yeah man. True. There you go. See, he was a good, good quality con man. You were a strippers fan. How do you understand that the world of strippers and strip clubs have always been linked to rock and roll? Because we're in the it same business. Good, yeah. In which way? They get up on stage and take their clothes off, and so do I. <laughs> We play the stuff and they really do dance to it, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, that seemed to like it. Show business, you know. I mean, a stripper is one of the most honest women you find in your life because she knows what assholes guys are and she still talks to them. <laughs> I, I think that's very good of them, really, you know, because, I mean, you meet the worst people in strip clubs. Most of the guys are just fucking complete assholes, you know. But she does get paid for it, though. Grabby, fat old fuckers. There's no money worth it in the world, man. No, if you no, get not for us. One of those asshole people, you know. Yeah. Then they, they do a hell of a job, man. They work harder than me. Um, one also very thing that you always see in the Motorhead interview is a reference with drugs and alcohol. Is it still a way of life that you enjoy? Well, there's one of them. I'm going to talk to you about drugs. Why should I get arrested for your interview? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't take drugs at no, all. I, 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 mind you, he drinks a lot. I drink a lot, yeah. I, and is it, is it easy to be on the road, working your ass off, getting a discipline? It's easier for him. All he has to do is jog and sleep. We have to buy all them drugs, man. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep while I'm out getting drugs. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, I don't know. I don't think about it. It's, it's boring. It not doesn't to, matter to us, you know. No. To, to, to so tour. So like choice, you know, choices. You get choices in your life. He didn't want to take him. I did. I did. He didn't. We're in the same band. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but when you tour, it, it's uh, that kind of goes hand in hand with with party and going yeah. out, and uh, you know some people enjoy it to be sober the whole time. That's fine, you know. I I just I just stand don't understand it. that. I can't know? stand a tour, you know, like that. To me, remember when Phil stopped drinking? No. Two days it lasted. Yeah, fuck yeah. I haven't had a drink since Sunday. Yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> what no. Sunday? A couple of weeks ago? No, two days ago. No. <laughs> yeah. No, it, not with Motorhead. It, this is a party band, that's for sure. It still is. I used to say to people, they go, are you still guys party as much as, as we read? And I said, yeah, we do, but you got to add another <coughs> 10 times to that and maybe you're, you get into the, the quote where we're at. Because nowadays know. this generation is like pussies, you know, no, like to a large extent. Sh- they go, you mean you had three whiskey and Cokes and you went on stage? I said, no, I was drinking since 9 o'clock this morning, actually. You know, when I woke up, then I went back to sleep for an hour and I started drinking again, you know, and then we go on stage, okay, six hours later. So um, in answer to your question, you have seen me drink three, and actually I've drunk half a bottle, you know, like, so it's normal for me, you see. Whatever's normal for you is normal for you. It's, it's okay, you know, you don't think about it. But, like, if you do what I do, it might kill you, you know, I don't know. Or you, what you do might k- probably kill me, yeah, and bored to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. Whatever you do every day is normal. So for a kid who's like, just doesn't do anything, you know, maybe has one beer every week, you know, that's normal for him. I, I can't imagine, I'll be bored shitless, you know. There's two things that uh, kind of uh, been blowing up in the, uh, or, or that I noticed uh, lately, is that with, with, uh, with kids is, Alcohol, they, they don't really party, I guess, you know, that's up to them. Yeah, and and I never heard so much uh, about, you know, everybody seemed to have a hearing problem. They always have earplugs and they're so scared about, uh, yeah, you know. It's so true. What? It's so true. Everyone, I mean, when I grew up and I played fucking loud music all my life and we never had a hearing problem. Every kid today seemed to have a hearing problem and they fiddle with earplugs. Well, that's because they got earplugs in all the time and yeah, then they finally take them out. You know, yeah. The traffic kills them. You know, like. I don't know. Is the world so much louder today than it was? I don't know what it no, is. But not, it, party and earplugs, I don't know. What's, like I said, pussies. They don't, you know. they don't seem to manage as Wake good. up, guys. Huh? Yeah. Look, not deaf. I can hear him asking me the questions. <laughs> right? 27 years in Motorhead. I should, if I was going to be deaf, I would be deaf, right? I mean, they go to one show and, and they, they scream and, tinnitus. And all the staff, and, always yeah, the security, yeah, yeah. running around, big tough guys with little yeah. earplugs, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's so loud. And this is the sound check. We haven't switched on the PA yet. we just got right. them on stage monitors on. They're going, oh, oh, fuck, you know, big, hard gym guys, you know. I don't understand. They're <laughs> fucking sissies, you know. And then you guys come, come in with us? We go in our party? Oh, no. No, no. no it's it's okay. sipping on the fucking glass of water. No, we're just uh, going to chill out back here. Yeah. Well, fuck you then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they seem to... I don't know what's, what's up with that, but it last five, and ten years. And this bottle of water shit. Yeah. You know, you, you see this band that plays really wild music. 
Right. And you go, Twisted Sister was the first one. I remember backstage at the Twisted Sister show, they had 12 bottles of Perrier water. Oh. That's it. Right? And I'm going, what's wrong with this fucking picture? These guys, a big brutal motherfuckers, dressed as women. Uh, you know, go, 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 we ain't gonna take it. Take what? <laughs> the other guy's bottle of Perrier water? You know? <laughs> What about Joey in, in uh, Man of War sitting? He poured yeah. water in a can of beer and sitting on stage going, Yeah, I, uh, sit, yeah. I sat down outside the venue and I spoke to my fans and we had a beer. And we they shared said, a, Joey. You no, know, we shared a beer together and he pours this beer with water in it all over his face. I mean, what's the deal if you, if you, what, you know, what's the fucking scoop here? False metal, man. Oh, God. How are you going to tell them? A hundred years ago, the Vikings ruled the land of Sweden. I go, a hundred years ago, the Vikings? They drove, they drove Ferraris. A hundred years, years ago, ago, they were driving Model A Fords, man. They were driving Ferraris a hundred years ago, fuck's sake. <laughs> fuck, you know. A hundred uh, years ago, the Vikings. So we're going to sing a song for you called Valhalla, uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, please, Eric, give that's me a fucking break. That's you know? Yeah, really, yeah, but, actually, it's better than money. <laughs> but a lot of these bands, to me, they are as dangerous as a Happy Meal at McDonald's. You know what I mean? Uh, it's uh, like you read magazines and and they're badass motherfuckers. They're gonna kick everybody's ass, and they they and we see them your, you know, and we meet them at festivals and we meet them at shows, and they are you know. Water. You know <laughs> my, my spare tire is more scary, you know, in my car than these bands. Right, yeah. <laughs> You go third gear is faster. So than what's these going guys. on? And, and they gotta go to sleep, and they gotta fucking oh god. So I don't know. That's not that's not motorhead way though. They that's don't have the spirit, you see. No. they lost it somewhere. Rock and roll is founded on misfits, on. you know. Rock and roll is founded on outrageous people who outrage you, outrage you, not your parents, outrage you, until you go up and become outrageous yourself, right? That's the plan, you know. If there ever was a plan for Motorhead, that's it. You know, outrage your peer group. <laughs> you toured with, you toured with Sabas and you, sh you share friendship with, with someone like Ozzy. Mm. What are you guys talking about when you get together? The weather, you know, T-shirts. <laughs> you know, that nice piece of architecture over there that he's going to go and piss on in a minute. You know, Ozzy, I mean, you know, we don't talk, you don't talk about how outrageous you are, right? you just are how outrageous you are, you know, it, and to me, I'm not outrageous. I'm just me, you know, I'm, I'm that fool I shave every morning, right? I mean, it's not important, you know, but everybody else thinks it's important. Everybody goes, oh, Ozzy's freaky. Ozzy wasn't freaky, he just fucking overdid it a lot on drugs and had a whale of a time, you know, he had a better time than you're having, right, talking about it, because all you're doing is talking about it, so fuck you, you know, like. <laughs> You know, why, why do people talk about us if they're having as good a time as we are? Because I ain't talking about them, because they're boring. You, know? <laughs> you need us, man. Wait, well, it's a different of... Why are you interviewing me? We haven't had a hit in France in years, right? Why are you interviewing us? Because we're fucking outrageous, right? See, it's very simple, really. I mean, you have two kinds. Either you are outrageous and you do what you do, or you sit around a table and discuss how to do how to, How do, to be it. outrageous, yeah. And and you know that that's so false. And and a lot a lot of these bands, a lot of these artists, we see that that shines through right away. They're if they've been sitting on around stage, to you know, pretend to be before outrageous. the stage and after the stage, they're like in cardigans and shit, you know, like talking. To, and they bring their kids on tour with them. That's the other sign of death, you know, bring your kids on tour. I mean, right there, well, you know, once in a while. right there, <laughs> you know. I mean, he brings his old lady and his kid out for like three days and they go home again, you know, and we, we don't overdo that shit. These people take them on a whole tour. Yeah. Imagine how much fun it is on that tour bus. Yeah. <laughs> or they're driving in a separate station, like with a little trailer on the back, you know, the wife and kids. Then they're not in the band anymore, right? They're with the wife. It's mm -hmm. different. Yeah. You can't do that, man. You have to be... The band has to be your only family. You have to be like this against the world. Well, yeah, right? with the then you might win. You don't, maybe, but you have to try that. That's the only way you have a chance. If there's three of you with three wives and kids and all in the three different rooms every night, then you're not a band. Yeah. We can end up on that. All right. All right. Good. Cheers, guys. Cool. Kel Damage. Right. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your time, guys. It was great. I am knackered today. Good questions, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always a pleasure. Good, Good TV.
a consummate professional. Did they arrive with anything to eat? Got a string fellas tonight, you see some professionals. <laughs> <laughs>